my name is uh, dr b k modi uh, i am the founder chairman of smart group uh, we have companies both overseas and in india i am also the uh, founder chairman of uh, overseas citizens of india investor forum so a forum is a body which has been working for last 20 years towards anti aging that means they are trying to find ways how a people can live a longer life but also a healthy life so we tied with them because we have a program which we call it beyond 100 that means living beyond 100 happy healthy and wealthy so we have a similar goal so with them we created this program with a smart group of a smart a4m conference in which we invited doctors who are involved in not in a normal uh, you know practices as a doctors but who are preventive medicine so there are a lot of preventive treatments which are including the functional medicine regenerative medicine and many other things so this particular area including ayurveda and others is not well recognized in india yet ayurveda is yes uh, recognized through ayush but other things are not yet recognized so the conference uh, you know went very successful we had more than 300 doctors and one of the things which came out was that this particular part of the medical science should be recognized by the government as an industry. So this is going to grow very fast because worldwide preventive maintenance and understanding of the human body is becoming much more clearer than was in the past. So now people are planning to live beyond 100 and be productive in that period. So this is a very new industry and uh, this is the first time this conference happened and it had a tremendous response and we hope that we'll have many other conferences in future also so that people are aware of new technologies which are coming in the field of healthcare. So when you talk of wellness is the whole uh, lifestyle which you talk about is a question of uh, what kind of air you breathe. Now that is a very big issue in a city like Delhi now. The city can be very modern, but it's not a wellness city. People are, don't see a, something where you can breathe uh, clean air. The same thing is do with water, with type of uh, food you eat. Also, the type of medical facilities are available, type of preventive things you do. You change your lifestyle, yoga, meditation. So it's a whole way of uh, running your way of life, which is very much in line with the old Indian thinking of oneness that your body is one, your mind and body is one, and whatever affects your mind also affects your body, and the, also the reverse. So uh, Wellness City is trying to create an environment where people can have a stress-free mind and a, a painless body. And this is only possible if the whole environment is like that, and the whole culture of the city is like that. So instead of creating smart city, we are saying that let's, call, let's create smart wellness city. So this uh, phenomenon of wellness city is already happening in various parts of the world. Among the best wellness city in the world, uh, there are two very prominent in India, uh, in Asia. One is Bali and one is Rishikesh. Bali is known as uh, for its wellness and the type of food and everything which is there. And also Rishikesh because it's a yoga capital of the world. And uh, world over people are looking for wellness city as a way to live, especially the uh, people who are aware of the uh, effect of uh, uh, not living in wellness city which have on their life. The wellness, uh, when you take to the masses, there has to be uh, according to the requirement of the people out there. So one is what we call luxury wellness. So luxury wellness is like five star, you know, facilities which you create. And like city of Delhi, we are thinking of doing that. We have already started two experiments. So two prototypes we have uh, doing. One is already operational in Rishikesh. So we have a, a wellness, a luxury wellness retreat in Rishikesh. The second one we are building is in Bali, which is going to be started by 2021, uh, early. Then we are also talking of wellness in the cities, what, what we call the 100 smart cities coming. So the government has de identified 100 smart cities. So with those 100 smart cities, we are saying that in which city we can create a wellness city. 
So the first city which we are creating is near Rampur. So Rampur is declared as a smart city and next to Rampur within 2 kilometers we are creating a wellness city. And wellness city have everything, the how you live, the flats, how you are treated, all the doctors and other things, uh, how there are hotels, wellness hotels, there are wellness uh, uh, centers for people to live up to beyond 100. So they are all composite uh, facilities which are there. So that is what we plan the city, but the wellness city is a different because you are focusing on the, uh, the whole concept of, as I say, stress-free living. So the environment which you create. So uh, like this house which I have created is a wellness house because you create an environment like that. And also uh, you, uh, uh, as I said, the water, uh, the, the food, air, anything which goes inside your body has an effect on you. And anything which you see which has an effect on your mind, on what you hear, so all those things affect you. So I think new technologies are coming and what we are doing is tied with the Global Wellness Institute and A4M. So A4M, this time there were more than seven countries, uh, people who participated. And with the Global Wellness Institute also we are working for doing conferences on this. But the awareness is not there in India for this. The investment forum is, uh, we are trying to invest big amount of money. I think India is missing a big uh, a source of funds and source of knowledge which is the overseas citizens of India. Uh, we who are living outside, who are the citizens of other countries, we are not to have Indian passport. So OCI should not be confused with NRI. NRIs are the one who have Indian passport. They are governed by the Indian embassies there. We are not governed by the Indian embassies. We are governed by our own embassy in India. So because I am a like Singapore citizen, so I have a, my own embassy in India. And uh, the same is true for every person who is from American citizen or a British citizen. Now these people so far have not been approached for investment. They are not covered in the budget. There is no policy for them. The government has just announced. Now these people, especially the younger generation in this, is very keen to invest in India. Because India is a country of future. India is a country where it's a dream for entrepreneurs. Because when you are make a success in US, it's very easy to make success here. So US, for example, the 50% of the hotel rooms in US is owned by OCIs. Now in India, there is a shortage of hotels. The same thing is real estate. So how will you build India unless you build the real estate? Or India is hardly built. So I think the, there's a big investment required in real estate. But what quality of real estate? That's why we are saying that we have a chance to jump the technologies and we can create a wellness-based real estate. The same thing goes for technology. There are so many technologies that are happening and OCIs are working in an environment which are smart cities already. Like Singapore is a smart nation. So for us to understand what is smart city or nation is natural because we live there. But for people who are living here, they have no idea. It's like a slogan. So they have no vision what is a smart city, what is a smart nation, what is a developed nation. So when these people who are working in developed nation had made success and made huge money there, they should invest in India. We are working with the government and we have said that if you create a proper policy for overseas citizens of India, that uh, uh, then you will find at least more than $100 billion coming from them here. I'm not talking of NRI money transfer. That's a different thing. Here we are talking of investment, actual investment in projects. But the government policy is not clear. Because OCI is either put in the foreigners, as foreigners you have a lot of restrictions, or they are put as in, uh, uh, NRI. So we are neither NRI nor foreigner. So there's no, that's not a challenge, that's opportunity. I think India, if they want to beat, be the global leader, like China did. <coughs> China in year 1985 came with a policy of one China. So they made an open policy for Chinese to come in. Just to give an example that if American Chinese invested in China for building a factory or building anything, the labor law, which are according to the communist countries, do not apply to them. Because China had labor laws, which was basically, you cannot fire people, you know, the very restrictive labor laws. 
but they were not applicable to uh, overseas Chinese. So they made a lot of laws which were to create one China policy in which people from all over the world, the Chinese, created what you see China today. So Chinese miracle, if you see, is a creation of overseas Chinese. Uh, and these overseas Chinese from all over, uh, including uh, America, um, uh, every part of the world. And these people brought a lot of new technologies, a lot of new things. India somehow has been too internal. We have forgotten these OCIs. We consider India belong to citizen of India without realizing that overseas citizens of India are also Indians. And they should be given equal opportunity and they should be treated with respect because they are already governed by their laws. So you don't put two laws on them. You don't say you are governed by American law also or Indian law also. Now most of the countries have a tie up between themselves of information flow and all that. So in India, these people cannot give donations because as overseas citizens, we cannot give donations. We cannot, uh, you know, uh, be, do what we call advocacy with the government. So we cannot be part of the corruption system in the country or advocacy system. So we have to be not subject to those laws which are made to catch corruption. If we do corruption, we will be caught in our own country. So if I am working in Singapore, we have strict laws there. America has a strict law there. So corruption laws are everywhere. In India, if anything, the corruption law are a little loose at present. They say it will take time for India to move towards a total corruptionless society. We are working on it. There's a, you know, we are making paperless uh, business. But what already? Hai. We are already working in an environment. Wahan 5G already are. Hai. So India to be, uh, technologically is much behind in the countries where we live. So we are used to living in a high level countries, technologically, uh, system, processes. So when we come, we will bring those with us. So that's what China did. And China's success is there. So India has moved towards it. The Prime Minister has announced it. But the bureaucracy here has not taken our steps because they feel they are out of our control. 